I'm going to give that a value of 7. I'm going to hit add on that. My next, my next value, my next lowest bound is 69. So I'm going to say from 69 uh, through to the highest value. See, SPSS will already have counted the anything above 87 or 78 uh, in the previous classes. So I've no problems here. So I'm going to hear that this is this is class 6. I'm going to add that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the next one, which is starts at 60. So I'm going to say 60 uh, is class 5. I'm going to add that. The next one is 51. I'm going to hit 51. That's class 4. I'm going to add that. And I'm going to say 42. 42 is the lower bound of my third class. So that's class 3. I'm going to add that. And then I have 33 is the lower bound of my second class. So I'm going to hit 33 is the lower bound. And that's class 2. And then finally I've got the 24 is the lower bound of my first class. And I'm going to label that anybody that has a score of 24 or above. Uh, I'm going to add them in to be 1. And SPSS is going to process these from the first one defined here all the way through. And it's going to ignore anything that's already ha that that's already has been calculated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to hit OK. And what we have here is we have that the variable has now been encoded. So you can actually see that a 45, a 45 is being coded as class 3 falling into class 3, which is actually correct. 45 is between 42 and 51, so that was that was given the right code. A 50 has also been encoded into class 3. An 87 has gone into, into class 8. The 42 has gone into class 3. The 54 here has gone into class 4, which is correct. A f between 51 and 60 should go into class 4 and so on and so forth. Let's just get something that's on the boundary. So let's see if we find something that's on a boundary, 33, 42, 51, 60, 69, 78, or 87, or 96 in this in this list. So I'm looking for something on the boundary. So let's just say, well, here's a 33 here. And you can actually see that 33 was coded into class 2. It wasn't coded into class 1, okay, which is what we might have expected, uh, but it's, it's exclusive of the upper bound. So SPSS has actually coded 23 correctly into class 2, which is the lower bound of the second class here. Okay, I suppose what we really should do also is we probably should go into the variable view window and we should, I suppose, let's say, assign values to these classes. Okay, so let's assign some values. Actually, let me get me my, let me get my, oops, let me get my, uh, my class, my class intervals here. So I'm going to go into variable view, uh, I'm going to hit values, and what I'm going to say is the first class, first label value is associated uh, from 24, less than or equal to, and up to, up to, let's say, so it's the, the values, the observations are greater than or equal to 24 and less than 23. I'm going to add that. Class 2 goes from 23. Less than or equal to the observations are, and it's less than the upper bound, which is 42. I'm going to add that. Class 3 represents the values from 42 uh, all the way through to, let's say, it's 51. So I'm going to add that in there. Uh, class 4 represents the values from 51 all the way through to, uh, all the way through to 60. Okay, this is class 4. Okay. Class 5, you can see I'm using the inequalities uh, to represent these classes. So class 5 goes from 60 to 69, so it's inclusive of 60. So the observations are bigger than or equal to 60, and they're specifically less than 69. I'm going to add that. Class 6, then, the observations go from 69, uh, which are less than or equal to the x's. Uh, which go through to 78. Okay, I'm going to add that. Class 7 then, its bounds is from 78 to 87. So from 78, less than or equal to the observations. Okay, oops, let's put in an upper bound here. Sorry, an uppercase letter. Uh, all the way through to 87. I'm going to add that. And then class 8 goes from 87 all the way through to all the way through to 96. Okay, and I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to define this variable to be 
an ordinal variable so this is an ordinal variable and now what we have is we go back here you can see that all of the intervals all the all the observations have been put into their appropriate classes so just keep in mind with SPSS the way it does it when you go to transform recode into different variables and when we look at the old new values typically the first a range here is inclusive of the lower bound and inclusive of the upper bound whereas this range here is inclusive of the lower bound all the way through uh, so it's the lowest value true uh, to all values whereas this one here is <coughs> this range here sorry this range here is all of the lower values all the values that are lower than a specific value whereas this range here is all the values that are above a specific value I suppose I could have taken this approach here uh, and just put in the upper bounds uh, of the classes yeah that wasn't that was another possible option but I I, I reversed it around but but like this, this this solution this solution works uh, okay guys uh, once again this was Jonathan Lambert with the mathematics development and support service at National College of Ireland and I hope that this video was in some way uh, intuitive and more importantly I hope was that I hope that was helpful for you and thanks for watching okay bye bye